All right, well, good morning. It is Monday morning. Uh, what is it, January 30th? So yeah, just went to the state park beside uh, the free beach camping and uh, had a shower, cleaned myself up. I collected my laundry, so we're heading to the laundromat. May as well just get everything cleaned. I wanna get my vehicle washed. There's so much salt and sand on the outside of my vehicle. Bird poop, you know, and then like the stains of the salt on the glass even. So I wanna get this vehicle cleaned up because I'm gonna be leaving the beach now. I'm gonna be heading inland because the weather just kind of sucks. And then yeah, it's supposed to be down to like seven. It's you know 13 right now in the morning. You know, compared to yesterday, the overnight low was 20. It was like 20 all night long. Woke up to 20. Um, so it's like 13 tonight, and I think yeah, seven tomorrow night. So I was gonna head straight up near San Antonio, and I think their, their low is three. <laughs> it's like no. Because, yeah, there's definitely a cold front all over North America. I think my hometown, Saskatoon, is minus 27 right now. I think it was colder than that. It was minus 30 there. So I think that's part of northern Texas is getting, like, below freezing as well. So, yeah, time to find that last little sliver of heat in the United States, in the bottom corner of Texas. And then, uh, yeah, get out of this country. Because yeah, it's been fun, but I'm definitely done. I mean, and it's the off season here. I want to go somewhere where it's not the off season, <laughs> where it's the on season. <laughs> so that would be Mexico. All right, well, not bad. It is, uh, it's 1020. You know, we got up at like seven, just after seven. So yeah, it's been a morning of just getting stuff done. So laundry done, beddings, Clean bedding, that's gonna be nice. Um, the car, I did a car wash, got all the salt and sand off of it. Um, just stopped at Walmart. I'm still trying to think of ways to block this off, but I think with the seat up, I'm just gonna have to use these black window coverings, and we're just gonna have to make sure something. I, I don't know. I can't find any kind of cargo net or any kind of dog barrier. There was a dog barrier at the pet store, but it was like fifty dollars, and it just didn't look very good. It's like a thing with compartments in it, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It maybe would have worked, but it wouldn't work with the bed down. Because I'd love to just be able to put something here that's easy to attach and doesn't involve flipping up the seat, but probably gonna have the seat up anyways. And uh, yeah, we'll just block it off, and I'll have her probably tethered up in the back when we're in Mexico on the roads, you know, until we're to like Mazatlan and smaller, chill. Uh, tourist destinations. I just don't want her in the front blocking my view. That's also a red flag apparently. You can get a ticket if the dog's in the front seat in Mexico. I saw so yeah she cannot be up here and it's a good safety. You know a few times she's gotten in the way I can't see when she stands up and I can't see my mirror or you know see out this window so. So yeah I mean so there's a huge cold snap here. I should bring that up and just show you real quick. All this purple is like minus 20 or colder almost minus 30 i think is the purple um so even the top of texas minus five right now minus 10 in amarillo like that's crazy minus 10 in texas so i'm basically looking at this little orange bit <laughs> in the bottom tip of texas so i'm going to zoom in here it's called falcon <clears throat> right on the mexican border um this lake here falcon state park so apparently out there it's free there's some free land around there and there's a border crossing there um which i'll have to do research on i originally wanted to cross at the border f further up by laredo there's one called columbia that goes right into the state where monterey is um but from here it's clo I'm closer to monterey so it makes the most sense it's the most direct and then, yeah, it's just a super small border crossing. That's the only thing I'm worried about is things aren't going to be there. Um, but there is a town right right here. There's a town right on the other side. Mexican town. So that's where I can, like, take it easy, relax for an hour once I cross, um, pull out some more pesos. I think I only got about a 1,000 pesos, which is only not even 100 bucks. 
And yeah, I think I need about $300 worth of pesos for tolls and gas. The goal is to only pay with cash because there are some uh, card scams that can happen. What is it there right now? It's 21 degrees there right now. It's supposed to be 27. Yeah, jeez. She says 286, 286 exit ramp. I don't have my voice on, my voice navigation. Um, I still only came out like north or south. Fuck. <laughs> I'm swaying. Um, come on, Google update. Is it left or right? I'm also gonna take the loop. No, I fuck. Where's the loop? Alright, we'll have to talk later. Take the next left on the Crosstown Expressway, right. then use the left lane to take the Texas 286 South Ramp. Alright. Instead of turning the radio off with the music playing, uh, pause the music, leave the radio on with the navigation. Nice thing I'm left lane. About the Texas 286 South Ramp. <laughs> As I'm contemplating my choice. <laughs> I love these freeways though, there's always those U-turn lanes and the way you exit and enter these freeways, like it all makes so much sense. Especially when you make a mistake like me, which I make every single day. 70 North. See, that's not even on the sign. Oh, see this? What? Where's 70 North? No! Now what do I do? Right at the fort. I keep right at the fort. Okay. Uh, even in Corpus Christi, like, this is a small 300,000 population town. I can't in a quarter mile, figure... Follow signs for Greenwood Drive. Follow signs for Greenwood Drive. Okay, that's good advice. So what do I have to do now? Do I have to exit again? Uh, no, we're just gonna stay on this. Two minutes slower if I do the... Okay, we're just... We're taking a different route now. Keep left. Okay, keep left. I can keep left. No, right, left. <sighs> so... Three <laughs> Big cities. The only big cities I have to navigate now are Monterey, Mexico, and Durango. And I mean, Mazatlan is a decent size too. It's, it's about the size, I think, of Corpus Christi. So there are some freeways like this probably in Mazatlan. And then once I get to Baja, I think things are pretty chill out there for freeways and kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, I'm gonna exit me. I'm just gonna get in. We got four lanes, actually. Let's stay here for now. Oh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I can't get used, like, just traveling on a road trip, I just can't get used to these big cities. And, and then you hit rush hour in, you know, these big cities on these freeways, and they're just a shit show. And you got people trying to rush through the rush hour, weaving in and out of traffic, and you got people slamming on their brakes, trying to stay in the slow lane. But it's, it's painful. I mean, I'm starting to realize that I'm not a big city kind of person. Alright, um, of course I forgot about gas. Gas light just came on. But we should be able to drive for at least another bit. These guys. Uh, garbage is coming out. It was like a leaf or something, but it's the last thing I need to get me. Okay, quick. Gas stop, then continue on route. All right, we are in Rob's town, looking for some cheap pes petroleum distillate. Petroleum? I say petroleum. Petroleum distillate. Petrol. In 1,000 feet, uh, your destination is, is okay? on the right. I just clicked on a random gas station. Oh, I just saw a gas for 3.30. I'm not paying 3.30, this is 3.06, so it's 2.95. Well, that's... Whatever we're doing. Cash. Your destination Easy, is on the right. Mexico. So yeah, I kind of just saw the first border patrol. They came racing by with his 
lights on. Um, and then, yeah, like signs saying, like, don't pick up hitchhikers. They might be, you know, <laughs> illegal immigrants. It's just kind of a weird sign to see, but I mean, yeah, okay. So, yeah, things are going to change here a bit, I hope. For weather-wise, too. I mean, it's supposed to be more desert here shortly. And less rain would be ideal. Because, yeah, I mean, this weather just makes me, like, sleepy. Alright, so yeah, there's like a line of the green is the cold and the orange is the 25-ish. Um, but I found this windy app is a little bit off temperature-wise. But anyway, it's supposed to be a little warmer than it actually is. I mean, it all depends exactly where you are if you zoom in and out. But uh, it says it's supposed to be around 15 degrees here, but it is not. It warmed up to uh, 9. <laughs> but anyways, I'm hoping I just hit that line and then yeah, it's uh, over 20 degrees. <laughs> Please, I'm not asking for much. I know it's January, I know I should not be complaining. <laughs> but this weather is just kind of, uh, this is why I'm on this trip, is to avoid kind of depressing, gloomy weather. So yeah, I'm hoping today it really works out like yesterday. Yesterday was so beautiful, it got up to 24, 25. Sun was out all afternoon. It was beautiful. I want that. But again, four for four. Oh, it's been like the most boring hour ever. <laughs> Foggy weather sucks for driving. I don't know. And I'm getting tired. Like, I had some sweet tea. Uh, I don't think there was any caffeine in there, so I feel like I should pull over and make myself an espresso. Um, maybe close my eyes for five minutes. like as painful as driving across the prairies. <laughs> kind of is. I don't even know, a lot of this land isn't even being used. I mean, not that I can see, you can only see a few hundred meters, but yeah. <laughs> not very scenic. Oh right, yeah, I just passed like the biggest border patrol uh, station. And so they're marked with these green badges, and like there's three cops in a row. Like, you just get a completely different vibe when you're getting near this border. Like very intimidating. <laughs> and then these are like ghost towns. Um, where am I right now? Uh, Hebronville. Uh, uh, I mean, Astra, it's a Spanish pronunciation. The police that I just saw is like the most police I've seen all trip between the border patrol and just highway patrol. So like, you know, they, they station all these border patrol and highway patrol officers down around this border because I'm just within 66 miles of the border. Right? We're not even that close. And then I know there's going to be some checkpoints closer. So yeah, I should get my passport out and stuff like that because I assume I'm going to get pulled over. I mean, I should probably tether up Kira just to be safe if I get pulled over. So yeah, definitely a learning experience for sure. And I mean, I'm mean, not in a rush. I'm pretty calm. Like, I'm not going to be freaking out if something happens. And, uh, you know, oh, here's a border checkpoint probably. Speaking of tying Kira up. No turning back now. This is all set up for people coming in this way. I guess there's some cameras here. So this will be the first place where my license plates get scanned into the computers. So at least now they know I'm here. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. Yeah, maybe just moving some stuff. Maybe getting Kira to lie down in the back. Just because I know when they come to the front window here is going to be, you know, climbing out that front window, especially if it's the 
where the driver is supposed to be. <clears throat> okay, I just pulled over. Um, I got Kira tied up. She's laying down backwards for now. Um, hopefully she'll figure it out. This is a great place to practice because, yeah, this is a, where she's going to be for all of Mexico when we're driving. When she gets a little upset or, you know, maybe just a little restless, I'll stop, you know, give her some treats, take her out, put her back in. There. This is how it's going to work. We'll put the big pillow there. She's on the leash. I'm just going to have a pillow. And it'll be a nice lion. And maybe if I train her like this with treats and positive reinforcement, like, this is a much better way. And then, like, I could have her even off leash, right? When I'm, say, back in the States or Canada. You know, I put a pillow here. That's the line. I mean, damn, she's kind of pulling on her collar still. Kind of, yeah, she's stubborn. I should put her harness on when I'm doing this, too. Um, and then it's not pulling right on her throat because she, she leans into it because she's, uh, yeah, a stubborn dog, if anyone knows Kira. Very stubborn. <laughs> Like I just passed it, it was a, a silver Ford Fusion, unmarked, but definitely a cop car. Like I don't know if that's Border Patrol or um, just the Highway Patrol. And, but yeah, you know, they're just in every little spot when you start looking, and they're just hidden. And then like, there's nobody else out here. I've passed like three, three vehicles I've seen. Like, and I mean, they scanned my license plate at that one checkpoint, so. If, uh, so there's, if there's a weird license plate, it's like either I get a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Like I'm sure I would have been pulled over by now if they <laughs> if they had any questions. But um, I'm sure when they see a Canadian license plate, let alone a Saskatchewan license plate, you know I'm not gonna get flagged. All right, well my planning is paying off. The fog is lifted. You know it's not raining anymore. It's plus 15 um, compared to like rainy and 10 in Corpus Christi, which was supposed to be one of the warmest places kind of in Texas. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to explore this little town of Zappo. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> or Zapata. Zapata. Yeah, there's, there's a park there and a boat ramp, so I'm just going to go right there and just probably relax for a little bit. Uh, get a feel, get a vibe check on the uh, situation on basically a border town. Lake is cut in half. Half is the US, half is Mexico. High school, giant high school. Yeah, just get a good feel for this town. Um, just on the outskirts here still. These dollar generals are everywhere. I haven't been to one of those yet. There are a lot of different dollar stores. So like that billboard there was like for medical. It's all in Spanish. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's actually a pretty decent sized town. There's some big mansions up there overlooking the river here, or part of the lake. Uh, so we're just going to cross the lake, so I guess, looking out to the far end of the, the lake here on the right, will be my first look into Mexico by land. <laughs> um, so this is a reservoir, oh, I'll just, the, the reservoir is completely empty, wow. That does not look like what it's supposed to look like on Google Maps. Uh... Okay, but anyways, those far hills over there are Mex is, is Mexico. Um, wow, I was really expecting to see some water. But yeah, there's large trees down there. Um, there hasn't been water down there for a while. There's a river, and there is some water. Um, yeah, I think the drought in the southern U.S. has been, you know, I would say, quite alarming. And I think it's only going to get worse. It's 
what I keep hearing. Okay, um, Falcon Lake County Park and Program. <laughs> I feel like I'm just gonna go straight to that state park here. Um, you know, I got lots of food. I got ramen, I got tuna, I got macaroni, I got some uh, smoky still. Um, I don't think this park is gonna work out like I think it's gonna work out. Okay, here's a boat ramp. So I just want to take a closer look. I mean, the, the state park where I want to camp is right on this water, too. But... Wow, they're really, uh... There's tons of signs of keeping your dog on a leash. Visitors to stay on the trail. Okay, yeah. Um, dangerous conditions, accessible. Not talking about anything else. Uh, yeah, I think we're just gonna go to the state park and pay for it. Uh, I mean, I'll check out the free campground. But, uh, yeah, not much of a park here. I mean, cool view. There's pelicans, a bunch of pelicans down there. So it's probably a good fishing lake. Um, now, if I look at this correctly, where's the other side? Is that the other side? It looks wider. I, think, I don't know. I think the other side right there is Mexico. Crazy. I don't know. <laughs> All these different gas companies. I don't even know what they are. Um, yeah, I was just down. Oh, I was at three quarters of a tank. I just thought I'd fill up. Just because um, if I do cross right at the state park, I just want to enter Mexico as a full tank. Um, yeah, may as well, right? And I just did the math, really good gas mileage, 7.6 liters per 100k. Okay, well yeah, this is definitely, you know, a major highway. Um, this is the 83, so I think this is a major one that connects, like, Texas up into you know, further north, like New Mexico and stuff, and then around to say wherever Arizona. Well, perfect. We've got all these wind turbines over here, blue sky over here, and it's 20 degrees now. So, yeah, uh, at least I found the warm weather, <laughs> which is, uh, yeah, what I do best sometimes. A little tiny bottom corner of Texas where it's you know over plus 20 and I found it. The rest of Texas is cold right now. The rest of North America is even colder. The only other warm spot is Florida right now. Florida and this tiny little corner of Texas if you want 20 degree weather. Tropical Trail. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna pause that and listen to the rest of that limp biscuit. Okay, it's 22 degrees out. There are some, still some clouds around, but god dang, and these wind turbines aren't turning. So we got past that cold front. What do you think those guys are doing? Cattle guard. Yeah, we're definitely back to uh, cactus country. Less tropical. Oh, I guess that was Border Patrol. I don't know if I got that. Yeah, I got that. Get that. Okay. <laughs> um, I can see all the trailers scattered up here on the hills, so I think this is going to be a pretty popular place. Um, but yeah, it's hard to tell how big this place was. But yeah, if I can just get a little corner of a grassy field. I will uh, take advantage of that, and yeah, it's looking like I'll be able to tuck in somewhere. The only reason to go into the state park is to get another shower, uh, so we'll think about that. Maybe tomorrow night. 
but I'm gonna be renting accommodations so we'll see I mean I think it's only a $4 entry fee to get a shower if I camp here as well all right so what do we do we just pull in here all right so if I didn't go to the right commission there I don't know there's just tons of campers let's just pull in here Ooh. Ooh. I'm dumping no littering I mean even right here the, oh, it's not really a picnic table Okay, well this seems pretty chill. Lots of nice, really nice vans. Um, I suppose I just pick a spot. I don't know where to go, but I'll probably just circle around a bunch, be really, really indecisive like I always am. Like I just park here, I'm sure, besides the giant motorhome, like something like that. Yeah, figure it out. Well, free camp spot it is. Um, yeah, it's 22 degrees. A few clouds here at the moment, but it's supposed to clear up. So yeah, I'm going to try to finish the three rooftop lights on the other side. And then I got a full 360 kind of perimeter lighting on the outside. And uh, yeah, and then I have a little bit of editing to do. That's not a priority. I'm just going to keep doing research. Um, because the closest route to Monterey is like right from here. There's no sense going back up or down to like Laredo area or down. There's one a little bit further down. That would be my second choice. But there's one basically right around the corner here, about two minutes away. A border crossing. That's right where the dam is for this lake. Um, and if that's just a super small one, like that just might be so, so chill. They might not speak any English. But I'm sure someone will speak English there. I mean, there's not a whole lot to communicate. I guess there is, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, or the other one gets me right on the road that takes me all the way to Mazatlan. The one further south, I think it's only a 30 minute drive south, gets me on the Highway 40. And the 40D is the, anything with a D is the toll road. So that's within an hour away and then I'm right, I'm on one highway the entire trip to Mazatlan. So those are my two options, I think. Um, but yeah, when I type it into Google Maps, Monterey is two hours, 20 minutes away. I'm excited. I, I mean, I almost feel like I should do it tomorrow. <laughs> um, tomorrow's going to rain too, so... I don't know. I don't want to spend an entire day here in the rain. So I wonder if I just book something in Monterey for, uh, for tomorrow. So many options. No rush, no pressure though. Love it. Getting hungry though, so I might make up. I got two Smokies and craft dinner. Or should I just air fry them? Probably just air fry them. Cook the macaroni separate, but then cut it up. Put the sausage in the macaroni. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, hello. <laughs> both of my hoodies on that's how damp and cold it is and yeah with the high humidity and the wind it's yeah it's just cold out but all the north america is like it's pushing down into texas here i know dallas was under a winter storm morning they got a bunch of snow and yeah the cold air is just pushing down here so we're just just above zero i mean the only warm place in america right now is around florida <laughs> uh texas lost its warmth for sure um but yeah i was close this morning to cross, <laughs> I bought the last thing uh, was uh, Mexican car insurance. So you need your own insurance in Mexico. Um, and I should have done a little more research, but I mean, I went through a very rec highly recommended um, company and a guy running it runs a lot of Facebook pages about traveling in Mexico. Um, but yeah, I mean, I paid 250 US dollars for six months. Now, I think you could potentially get less than six months, but that was kind of like the minimum on most car insurance. Just kind of weird how they do it, but I mean, you know, if you're just getting one month, it's not worth it maybe for the car insurance company. You know, if I was paying a sixth of the 250, you know, I could see how that's not, you know, they can't make money off of that as an insurance company. But anyways, I'm not too worried about that. I mean, I know I had to get some sort of insurance um, additional to my SGI insurance. Um, but yeah, that's all set in place. Um, I've done all my research. 
I think I'm going to drive up to Columbia though. That's like, again, one of the most highly recommended border crossings. Everyone says cross at Columbia. So yeah, I'm going to do that. It adds another two hours ish, maybe a little more depending on where I end up going the first day. But I think I'm just going to like do a full day and drive as far as I can and maybe book something last minute or just, you know, roll into a hotel. Um, Cause I think we just have to wing that part. Cause I'd like to do it in two days, but I like to, you know if I find warm weather, I mean, might as well just stop. And there's no sense pushing myself. But I need, I need to get at least back to like the high teens to 20 degrees. This is so cold. Which central Mexico, I think, is supposed to be about 20, 25 tomorrow in the middle desert dish, the middle desert part. Uh, but yeah, like I even got the diesel heater running. I've been running it intermittently, kind of through the night and this morning. Because yeah, it gets down, you know, single digits in here and it gets, gets chilly. But yeah, this diesel heater's been working great now. Um, that I punctured a hole in the intake too. I don't know if I mentioned that, the intake filled up with water. <laughs> I had to poke a little hole in it to let all the water drain out. Just hear this water gurgling when it was trying to start. But yeah, it's a great little heater. Still got lots of diesel. Especially when I just run it intermittently. But yeah, I'm excited. I got everything in place. I'm just gonna do a bunch more reading tonight. I think I went through everything in my vehicle. I'm gonna eat the last bit of food. <laughs> I know you're allowed to bring some food across, but the only thing I'm gonna be bringing across is canned soup after today. So I'm gonna double check that, you know, because there are vegetables in there. So I think that's okay. If not, it's two cans of soup that aren't aren't really good, to be honest. They're President's Choice cans of soup. That's why I've had them for months. Uh, I've had them since like Christmas, I think. <laughs> and yeah, still haven't eaten them. So anyways, I will be okay if I have to just throw those away. Or maybe I can give them to someone here. But yeah, it's just one of those days. But the other thing is like, I, I took like a nap. Like I woke up at the crack of dawn, but then I had a little nap around 9 and 10. So I'm going to try to have another little nap and get a good night's sleep. Because yeah, I have, I think in total, uh... It's a good 12 hours in total, maybe more now with the Columbia Detour, so add another two, maybe three to that. It could be 15 hours that I need to do in two days, I guess, at the least. Hopefully, it just kind of works out and I do three days. But yeah, nice to just relax, even though it's just inside. It's like a rainy day kind of day. Um, there's nothing I can do about it, right? If there's warm weather in Texas... I tried following it here yesterday. I got a little bit of it here yesterday, but then yeah, the evening, this cold front came in. I had that bit of sun for like, not even an hour yesterday, unfortunately. But I'm not complaining. There's no snow on the ground. Because <laughs> yeah, Saskatoon's been around the minus 30 mark. So I'll take a little damp rain and an overcast day. We had some sunshine yesterday, so that's all I need. And we should have sunshine tomorrow evening, so. Well, more research, do a little more YouTube stuff. I kind of, yeah, set it out last night, got a few people watching it, so that's good. And uh, yeah, we'll just take her easy and uh, yeah, hopefully just see you in the morning. And I want to probably leave here in the dark and I'll leave here maybe at 6 a.m. So, you know, halfway through my drive to Columbia border crossing, the sun's just rising and then yeah. Okay, yeah, it's just been one of those days, I mean, spending the whole day on kind of devices, doing research, and then some video editing, video uploading. Yeah, so, I'm gonna, I keep going back and forth, but I'm set, um, I'm going to the Columbia Crossing because everybody recommends it, and it's a very popular crossing for Canadians and Americans with RVs who are, you know, vacationing in Mexico, so... And I don't have to go into a large Mexican town right away, like Laredo, or New Nuevo, uh, horrible pronunciation. The New Laredo, on the other side, on the Mexican side, is a huge city that basically you just enter once you cross there. Um, same where I'm close here, Roma is another very, very, you know, big city, big-ish, kind of, but not as big as Laredo. Um, but yeah, when you cross Colombia, you're, you're out side you're just north of laredo so you basically just take the highway and then you just head inland um inland away from the border um 
so yeah, and I have a few spots saved, depending on how far I can drive. It all depends how long <sighs> the border crossing takes. That might take a while. I'm hoping it was really quick. So my plan is to leave here at about 5.30 in the morning and get there at about uh, 7.30 in the morning, half an hour before they open. They open at 8, unfortunately. That's one of the dilemmas. Laredo's open 24-7. So that puts me at 8 o'clock right when they open. Hopefully, you know, one of the first few cars in line. Or the first car in line. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, ideally I could be out of there at 9. Or worst case, it could be like 11. You know, it's hard to say. So I don't know how far I'm going to get. But I think I, I, I want to do a long day. The other issue is they ask where you're staying. And I don't have a place booked. And I don't really want to book a place until I cross the border. Because if I leave at 9 a.m. from the border or 11 a.m., you know, that puts me in two different places where I can drive to. And I don't just want to book something close and play it safe because then I'm just sitting, you know, potentially just sitting all evening again like I've been doing today. Which, you know, yeah, I don't want to be here right now. <laughs> it's kind of a weird, weird uh, free campground vibe here. But there's lots of friendly people here. Lots of Quebec people here as well. But yeah, this part I should have done a little more research, maybe, instead of doing it all today. But I keep reading everything. Everything should be good to go. I have car insurance. The only issue I see there is I don't have it printed off. It's just on my phone. There is a copy machine that I know for sure at this um, Columbia Crossing. So that's good. I can make copies. I don't know if I need to print off this car insurance. Hopefully not. But then, yeah, I just make some extra copies of my passport. Um, and then the FMM, the basically the immigration, that little card, I need to make photocopies of that as soon as I get it. And this is all in the same building, which is also a beautiful thing um, at the Columbia Crossing. It's just in one building. You got a, a copy printing station, and then you got the temporary import permits for your car, and the FMM for your uh, immigration tourist visa. So it's all in one place. So ideally... This should be so smooth, you know, I could even be out of there, you know, before 8.30, which would be lovely. Because then I can almost get halfway to Mazatlan. Um, is it Torino? Is about halfway? Um, not quite halfway. Roughly, anyways. So yeah, a few different places between Mazatlan and Durango where I can stop. So I think I just have to wing it. Because it just depends on how the crossing goes tomorrow. But yeah, the, the shittiest part is waking up at 4, 5... 30-ish, doing my two-hour drive to Colombia. I wish there was a spot to stay that was closer. Even a paid campground I was considering, but there's just nothing around there. Unless I drive in the wrong direction and add, and add more mileage. So, I think it'll all work out really good. It's just going to be an early morning, but I've been resting all day. You know, I'll try to get an early sleep here, because I know I'm going to be kind of wide awake the second it's 5 a.m., because we've got deadlines to meet. So yeah, I'm going to make up some uh, cinnamon rolls in the air fryer. I'm trying to use the last bit of food up here. So with my stomach full of cinnamon rolls, I should sleep pretty good.